Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This is one of our last videos in our drawer making series. We're actually going to get that drawer bottom in today. But I'm also going to show you some unique uses of a marking gauge and why you really should consider having a couple of them. It's a great tool that I think is underutilized and every day seems like I come up with another idea on how to use a marking gauge. Stay tuned. You do not want to miss this. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. Especially made for round bottom drawers. No sweat, we can pull it out. The only problem is it creates a lot of friction when you're trying to fit that in there. So let's try this. Squeeze that handle and see if it'll hold everything. The uh, rabbit faces the bottom. And the, uh, the big, the, well, this rabbit goes in the bottom. All the rabbits face the bottom. When I said bottom, I meant drawer front. Now, that. That is just, okay, hold on a second. The first thing I want to check, I haven't done that yet, is to make sure that the drawer back, this, is not interfering with the groove and it's not on that side and it's not on that side so that's good I just kind of a peek down here make sure there's no glue in the way and those grooves the grooves on the side and the grooves on the drawer front line up so that won't be an issue if it was we could just take a little bit off to make it fit but it's all right That's a really snug fit side to side. You got to keep this thing moving at the same pace. I think it's too tight. Yeah, you got to be really careful because you don't want to uh, you don't want to break these sides. Oh, did well, I tell you I looked up the hardness of holly? Yeah, uh, somebody else cherry. did too, and the holly is harder than cherry. Not well, by much. What's the... Uh, 950 to 1050. Yeah, but what's the... Uh, Jenka. Jenka. So Jenka is the... Uh, if you think of... Is the wood equivalent of... What's that? Rockwell. Rockwell hardness on metal and Jenka hardness on wood. Okay, so... Just, I'm going to run this again to make sure that... Okay, so that slips through that easy enough. That I don't think the problem is in this thickness. I think the problem might be in the length, so... We'll take a little bit. I don't want to lose that bottoming out fit that I talked about. That makes the drawer so strong. So I'll use my block plane on this. I'll cut a little chamfer here. Oh. Okay. And then just take a couple of passes. So when you're doing this, and it's a very narrow edge to try to plane, keep your thumb on the top so you've got this board centered in the plane. I keep my thumb underneath so my thumb is making contact with the sole of the plane and with the piece. This hand's really doing nothing more than pushing forward and just have a light enough touch. You could show them an alternative. Which is? An edge plane. Well, the reason I don't want to use the edge plane is because it leaves a black mark because mm. of the bronze. I'll show you what Jake's talking about. This is... Uh, the other one. Lee Nelson's edge plane. And it you would, have, you have it a would, set, it would, don't you? Reference like, no, I sold the other one. No. I never used it. You reference the side like this and run along there and that'll keep that square and it cuts on a skew angle. The problem is it'll often leave 
the bronze will often, the oxidation will leave black marks on blonde wood, so. That's why I'm not using it. And the reason why I'm not getting a nice clean shaving yet, just starting to, is I had to get through all that ripped up fiber from the table saw. Alright, let's try that again. Now, what I will do is just take my squirrel tail and cut a chamfer on almost heavy enough. I'll do it on both sides. That'll just help lead it into that front groove. You shouldn't really need any on the side. No, that's too tight. Well, I just, I don't know whether it's too tight from I mean, that stuff so flimsy, it can't, I can't imagine it being... It's not, it's not too tight there, because I can move it within the groove. It's snug over here. Looking to see if I can see. Yeah, looks a little snug right there. So today was the day, actually yesterday was the day, but yesterday we made our selection for the, all the uh, combat wounded vets that had applied for our August, September and October classes. And between last night and today I got to make the calls to tell them they'd been selected, which is kind of like being Santa Claus in May. <laughs> and they're always most, most appreciative. We have two Vietnam vets that are coming this year, which I think is uh, great. So if you're on our live broadcast Saturday night, we're going to take a minute and give a shout out to all the guys, name them all, the ones that have been selected. This was our, our biggest intake ever. How many do we have? A total of 85. We had 85. And last year... We took them down a bit. Our, our last class... Last year... Oh, shoot. Almost did it. Almost did it. I, this is the side that I took material off of. Tilting out. This way? Yeah. Finish my sentence. Last year we had how many? Last October. Probably 56. All right, let's try this again. This is where you don't know whether you're coming up against the. Uh, you're trying oh, to get it out. In there. No. Huh? no, I'm going to try and 
pound it down. But I, just, just, I said this is where you don't know where you're coming up against the friction of the curve or whether it's too tight somewhere. But I, I gotta keep it going on. Actually, I prefer to push it. Then you're, I can tell. You gotta come on the left side. It's too tight. Stick that, why don't you stick that in the vise and you can just pull up on the drawer. I like this way. What are you looking at? See, I can't tell what's... That's not such a reliable method anymore because you don't know whether you're looking at the friction that's going to... or the rubbing that's going to occur just because of this curve in the wood or whether it's actually too tight. Did I do the other side? I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I think you need to trim it in its length. No. No. Don't think so. Tilting down, tilting down. Tilting down. That didn't take off too much. Come on. You're going, no, you're, you're tilting. There. Still tilted. It's got to come down on the left side. No, you're pushing too hard on the right. That's way too hard. Ch so try this. Huh? Try fitting it in the drawer opening. This right this side, this this side <clears throat> is okay. See that? This side, I can't do that. So, so this is the side that needs attention. Wait, what? try fitting it in the drawer opening what right for? now. To, well, to see, to, because if it's, if it's at all too long, it won't fit into the drawer opening, right? I wouldn't be able to do what I just did if it was too long. It's just too fat. I don't want to, you can have a... Where's my, uh... What could I do that with?
I could do that with, uh, let me try something. The only downside is this leaves a mark too. So, um, I'm going to take my marking gauge and I'm going to turn the cutter around. Dangerous. You'll see why. So, by the way, this is my 5 8 inch diameter cutter. I have all kinds of different cutters because I just, there's lots of uses for them. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to flip it around so that we got flat face of the head facing the flat face of the cutter. And I'm going to use it to size that. I'll lock that down. Now, I don't want the brass leaving a black mark. So, we'll put a piece of... Do we need to? Now I know the front part fit. So here's the danger in doing this, is the cutter is going to want to go into the wood. And you got to put a lot of pressure on it to keep it from doing that. So I'll come right in here, squeeze these two together, lock that down, and it has to be locked really firmly so that it won't move. Tons of pressure this way. Now, I can slide that down right there, but you can see where it starts to peel off a little bit of a shaving. This is long as you keep lots of pressure against it so that it won't come back and cut on the inside. That's the reason why you want a large diameter cutter. Now that's actually about the depth of the groove. So I don't have to do too much more. Uh, what can I do to finish that? The long pass with the chisel. Watch your camera in my drawer. Should be able to just go right along like this, but I got. I kind of cheated on those last two. What? Right here, back here, back here. Just a second. What I'm going to try to do is. Another marking cage. If you need a reason why to have 
two marking gauges. This is a good one. I'll just make that cut right along the inside to free those fibers up. Now, since we've already got it set, we may as well do the other side before we put it together. Gotta change that tape. Well, I got narrower stuff. Why don't you take light passes? Well, because this is this is uh, this is um, soft enough stuff that I can do it in one. You didn't go deep enough here. I'm always looking for other uses for uh, marking gauge. So if you know of one, I'd like to hear about it. I think it's an overlooked tool in terms of what it can do. I use mine as a router plane. We do it to uh, clean up the bottom. We have a 3 8 inch diameter cutter that we'll use to go in and clean up the bottom of a mortise. Sometimes not even so much as clean it up, just to go in and use it as a depth gauge to make sure that, in other words, if you, you've chopped a mortise, then you set your marking gauge cutter to the uh, length of your tenon and then you drop that down inside your mortise and go end to end. As long as you're not making contact with any wood, then you know it's, gonna, it's not going to bottom out on you. But these cutters are fragile. So the 3 8 diameter cutter has a much more, uh, more obtuse angle on it. So it's pretty strong. It can handle that kind of work. Make sure there's nothing in the grooves. Now this should fit. Like that. Should have done it that way the first time. Is it too wide? Hmm? You mean this way? Hmm. Well, I haven't planed, I haven't shortened it yet. Hmm. That's, is that already sunk in? I think it is. No. Make 
make sure there's no debris on there. Big test. Yeah, see? <laughs> Always does that. Drive me crazy. Try pushing, try pulling the sides in. Yeah, I just did. That's why I went in and did that. Why that does that? I know it's not. So if it was, if, if the uh, tongue on this was too thick and it goes in there and it causes, causes this piece, the side, to kick out like that, then you're going to have a rub spot along here. If it's too wide, it's pushing the whole thing out, but it had to get by the gatekeeper right here, and it did. It slipped in there easily. In fact, I can see a little bit of a gap, so I know it's not too tight that way. Obstinate son of a gun. Okay, at that point, it's not too... Uh... Now the only thing possible, I'll check that too, is if these sides, just by the very nature, go in in the middle, and we fit them that way, which doesn't make sense. Now that you're putting a drawer bottom in, it's make, forcing the sides to be straight, and that part that did fit before would actually be pushed out. If that makes any sense. Maybe we just won't put a bottom in. snug. I think I'll, first thing I'll do is just go in and, and uh, do the same thing with the front. This way. <coughs> As I do with the sides. So this is where it's even more difficult because if the grain's running the wrong way, then it's going to have a tendency to Oops. So why don't you take a smaller bite? Hmm? Yeah. the shoulder plane. I'll scrape that off first. This is my Wood River number 91 and it's a half inch half inch wide blade
little more aggressive than that. A little extra down here. Clean this edge just to clean it up. Nothing has changed. I don't know why I'm doing this again, but maybe because I couldn't believe it the first time. We, uh, we verified the depth of the groove with the router plane, the small router plane. So we know that's not an issue. See, that, that goes down easy enough. There's no force. That sits in there a little bit better. Now, I just wonder. All right, so there's a bump on the side. And there is a little bit, not nearly as much. So. Try setting it on the bench and no, hitting it with this. No, what I want to do now is take it out. Oh, and check to see if it's the opposite? Yeah, check to see if there's an issue that with it out. So we set that on there. There's a bump in the middle. Yeah, really isn't. So, um, which one did we? The other one has a bump. Okay, so it, it moves pretty freely. I mean, it's touching up there, but that I wouldn't call that a bump in the middle. Whereas when we flip it around this way, it pivots right here. So we'll just put a little easy to remove X. That's seated down there. So, ah. well, that's a hard enough of a push that it'll definitely burnish. That shows, unless it's my imagination. I wish I hadn't have done that because now I think I'm, I'm telling myself what I'm seeing. Okay, so when I look at that, it almost looks like a burnished area from there to there, which is... where the problem should be. Oh now, we ran, we ran a router plane 
in the groove on those drawer sides, right? Yeah. This one's already been done. So, um, okay, let's let's go ahead and put the bottom in because we've got to fit it with the bottom in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom in, then we'll come in and we'll try to dress it with the plane and get that thing to sit in there. Let me just get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, I just wanted to check and see what I did on this one. I haven't done this before, but I think this looked a little bit neater. I used the finish washer on there. So cut a slot, used, uh, looks like, like a number four screw, and then, actually, I might as well take it out to make sure, that little finish washer. I want to get the same thing. These are these are stainless steel finish washers. Got them in brass tube. I'm using a steel screw. I may as well use a steel. Different size it is, isn't it? You've got brass screws too. Yeah, but I haven't got any long enough. This is the size right here. Easy. I'm trying to be careful not to beat up my drawer. No, nah, I like the bra. I like these better. All right, put this one back in. Just, just snug. Doesn't have to be singing tight. Now. This stuff is all going to grow from here, so I should take that out and bring that down. Bring that down to about right there. So I'll take that much off. Find the halfway point. Fourteen and a quarter, seven and an eighth. And that screw we get an eighth inch wide slot. I'm 
remember, so this, this bottom is going to expand from here, meaning it's dry now, it's only going to get bigger. So that means we want to, I would suggest that we make that slot half an inch deep. I'll use my cross cut saw on that. fits. Just to erase that little bit of pencil line. Drop that down. Now, I'm pretty sure we're going to reference, this is going to close off of the back, meaning because this doesn't expand this way, we can use the back as a stop for the drawer. So for that reason, I kept this short so that as that expands, hopefully it's never going to expand out beyond the end of here. If it is, then your drawers won't close properly, or they won't close to the point where they should. my Yankee drill. Too small? Yep. Cover the right about there. We're at 44. Are we? We're going to do another episode just to get this final little bit. You know what we'll do? Okay. So, uh, we're going to go a little longer. I want to get that. Can't live with it. Okay, so we're going to go right essentially from here to here. I can still get most of that on there, so it's pretty well supported. This has got a nice light set for a nice light cut, Jake. I don't know. You weren't using it? Mm -mm. Just retract it. Mm, I just... I thought that was going to 
hold. Okay, so I know it can, the only part it can affect is right along that bottom edge. I'm just talking myself through this. That's not the ideal piece of holly for a drawer side, by the way. It's got a little bit of twisted grain in it, but it's all I had left. Check this one. Do a, make a pass on the bottom edge of this. I hate taking off that much. I got to put a new edge on that blade. We're going to do, what we'll do is, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Somehow we'll finish, somehow we will do another episode on this. I got I to gotta sharpen my blade. It's going too long. I got to sharpen my blade and I got to slow down. I can't be rushed on it. Um, just wanted to show you something before we close. I'm going to turn this into a little bit of a commercial. So, if you like what you see when it comes to the marking gauges, here's, I'll just show you them. Here's what we, yeah, we saw, them, we saw them right on the rods. What I like about that is instead of me fumbling through trying to find the right Allen's key, you just switch the rods out. Just drop it in, take a second. So this is the one that's a 3 8 diameter. So you see how, how uh, not blunt, what's the word? Obtuse. Acute, acute no, acute would be acute. Was low. Obtuse would be high. It's really, really st steep angle, oh, oh, so it's really good for I've going in, okay. going in the bottom of a mortise and working along the side like that to try to loosen up any of those fibers. This one, this cutter is the actual one that we use on our panel gauges. You know, just in case you don't know what a panel gauge is. Here's your panel gauge, like a big marking gauge for marking. I mean, your marking gauge is good for about that far away from the head and then you, you don't have enough reference surface on the head to prevent this from twisting. So if you run in the middle of a board, you'd use your panel gauge. So there's your cutter and you just tap that. I'm into it. I'm committed now. I've got to demonstrate it. Tap that key free. Set it for whatever you want. Tap your key in. And it's got a rabbit on the head so that it doesn't roll this way. And then you would go into the middle of your board referencing off the edge and it doesn't twist and bind on you. 
That is a panel gauge. So we use those, we also offer them with panel gauge cutters. So you've got, that's a 5 8 inch diameter and you can do what I did, which is allowed you to go down in, which by the way, I'd forgotten about it, but it's the best way to go in there and cut that lip so that it's exactly the same. Okay, then there's this one. Now this is one that we have made, Paul up in Ontario makes these for us. And this is a, a half inch diameter cutter and it's a really good one because it's, if you look at it, it's uh, cute enough to make it nice and sharp for going through pine, but it's also obtuse enough to make it st st uh, stout for using it in hardwood. Especially when people are new and they're using it and they're dragging that through and they twist like that. Well, the next one I'll show you, you'll, you'll end up breaking it if you do that. If the, if the cutter is engaged in the wood and you accidentally twist it like that, there's a good chance you're going to break the cutter. So if you're dealing with just softwoods, cedar, pine, then this one, which is 9 7 sixteenths, this one is really acute. So it'll, it'll slice through that stuff beautifully. But in hardwoods, it's fragile. And then we have two different marking gauges. This is the one that uh, we make right here in the shop. We turn them on the lathe. And that's the same material. That's the same material. Actually, these are fresh because we finished them last night. Rex did them. We The same material that we make our uh, dovetail saw handles out of. It's a composite. And then this one is, uh, we call it the cosmonized gauge. So we get this from Woodcraft and we take them in and, and make them work a little bit better. But either way, all the cutters will fit. So you're just swapping out one for the other instead of having to go in, like I said, take the cutter off. Anyway, I'll put a link down in the, actually we'll put a link in the description, but Luther will probably put one on the screen as well. So, if you like this, first of all, if you get any comments about any of this, love to hear it. Always love your feedback. It's nice to see what other people, there's, you know, 5,000 brains are better than one. Um, also, if you like these, share them. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so that you know when we come up with a new one. And, what else am I forgetting? I think that's it. I'll find out what I forgot after. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. I promise we'll get this thing tomorrow. It'll slide in there just perfect. See ya.